Shalom Chavarim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Sorry we don't have a video feed this evening. We have all of our cameras moved to the office for a uh, interview that we'll be doing tomorrow. A very special interview. I don't want to divulge the guests for tomorrow. I'd rather just be a blessing to you, those that enjoy watching the interviews that we do. Um, we, a lot of people have been asking, Steve, what is going on with the United Nations and the 70 nations that came against Israel, actually 70 plus nations? Uh, well, of course, we know that Jamaica uh, refused to vote against Israel because they believe that Israel has a right to the Temple Mount. And I thought that was very heroic of Jamaica for making that type of stand. And uh, of course, the Prime Minister Netanyahu also appreciating that uh, great value that, that they showed in standing with Israel. And some are trying to say that what uh, the United Nations did, even John Kerry was saying that it's not going any further in uh, forcing a two-state solution, but in reality, they did vote in order to actually uh, reaffirm uh, the, the resolution 2334 that was passed back in um, December of 2016. That is concerning in itself. And the reason I say that is because the resolution 2334 actually uh, says that all the, uh, uh, all the settlements inside of Judea and Samaria are illegal occupations that Israel is to go back to the pre-1967 borders. Another thing that people may not be a realize that is going on in this uh, latest uh, issue with the resolution that the United Nations has been uh, affirming, that is the 70 nations that came against Israel, is that also anybody in any of the governments that is against a two-state solution, they're basically to be banned uh, from from the government itself or whatever government they might be. And so I could not help but think of Rabbi Yehuda Glick in this case here. He is against a two-state solution. Danny Dannon is against a two-state solution. Uh, they both are for one state. And uh, how many more people in government positions will not be allowed based on United Nations pressure uh, allowed to participate in governments if they voice any uh, opposition to a two-state solution? And I myself have always uh, affirmed for one state with uh, a democracy and equality for both Palestinians and Jewish people living side by side. And I have not uh, denied the fact that, yes, there are problems uh, with the Israeli government and with the Palestinians where there's not full equality. Uh, but you have to understand the Israeli government also is dealing with a lot of terrorism that is also overlooked by the United States and other countries around the world. So it is just a big mess to begin with, and I cannot see any good coming out of a two-state solution other than maybe somebody's pockets being fattened as a result of that. Uh, another inter interesting article in Sputnik here, relocation of the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem to make Middle East spit blood for years, but then I guess everybody seems to uh, fail to realize, do they think there's going to be peace by uh, uprooting the Jewish people out of Judea and Samaria and, and throwing them out as they did around Gaza some years ago under Ariel Sharon? No, it's not going to make it any better. And although the Jewish people are not quite as hell-bent on spilling blood of other people as we see a lot of, uh, a lot of radicalism amongst the uh, Arabic nations right now, like in the case of Syria, where they're willing to behead their own population to get their point across, uh, then yes, it's not going to be an easy thing, but nonetheless, we cannot expect peace on the Israeli side either if you begin uprooting the Jewish people from these regions. I personally do believe, though, that it's going to happen regardless because prophecy clearly has indicated that this is on its way. And uh, they say that Donald Trump, though, he plans to relocate the U.S. Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, and they condemn him for it. Even the Pope of Rome is condemning him for it. And the article here on Now the End Begins, the Pope Francis authorizes the Palestinian embassy at the Vatican as he threatens Trump over Jerusalem move. Uh, the development came as Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas met with Pope Francis' inauguration of the Palestinian embassy to the Holy See. Abbas said he had only heard through news reports of the proposals by the U.S. President-elect Donald Trump to move the embassy to Jerusalem. Now, here's what's really odd, though, in this statement here, even for the Pope to be upset about it. What difference is it 
If Pope Francis is upset for Donald Trump to move the embassy, the U.S. embassy to Jerusalem, what any difference would it make that between that and uh, the Vatican recognizing a Palestinian state without the uh, Mahmoud Abbas and Netanyahu even agreeing upon a two-state solution to begin with? You know, so it's just kind of absurd. This is one entity forcing their will on the people and expecting the Israeli people to accept it, uh, which is really no different than, um, than the United States president moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Again, it would be forcing a will upon another people. Now, here's the issue, though. If Donald Trump were to move the U.S. embassy to, we would say, West Jerusalem, then there should be not a single word of complaint by Mahmoud Abbas. If he is actually willing to accept East Jerusalem as part of his own state and own capital, then why in the world would they be complaining? Well, the reason they're complaining, because the third time that the United Nations reneged on its promise for a Jewish homeland was in 1947, where, the, uh, where there would be a foreign entity that would control Jerusalem, and there would be a Palestinian state, but even the Palestinians did not get Jerusalem. That was going to a foreign entity, which no doubt would have been the Vatican, clearly as we can see from Ariel Sharon, uh, excuse me, from Shimon Perez's statement uh, on the wire that he sent to the Vatican that yes, he would give them Jerusalem and put a United Nations force there in, uh, inside of Jerusalem for, for basically the prize that the Vatican would get by handing over a two-state solution. Well, unfortunately, uh, Shimon Perez was unable to carry through with his own promise, but it seems like the infrastructure was certainly set in place just for that. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benun. You are watching Israeli News Live. Would well like to share one other thing to you, with you, though, that's a little bit concerning here. Now, my good friend already happened shared this from another uh, person's uh, uh tweet here that came out very concerning here this is china according to according to the source we get on this china sending uh nuclear capable missiles or uh something of that sort one of the comments here it said these missiles here ballistic missiles are used to sink ships take a look at what is look at this video right here <laughs> According on the uh, comments in here, they said there was many other armaments on the uh, on the train as well. It just so happened that these uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles. Uh, we're on there as well. It says here, recent videos show a train loaded with various mil military vehicles, including TELs, that probably carrying ICBMs uh, in China is where this actually happened at. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening.